On today's show, a ton of Detroit City FC news to talk about everything from a match of smoke, smell, and darkness to a resounding win against Atlanta United 2 to the upcoming matches with Birmingham Legion and MLS Club Columbus Crew. Hello, friends, and welcome to Your Daily Detroit from a pleasant and sunny north end. I'm Jer Stays, and next to the table from me is... Fletcher Sharp. Good to see you on this Monday, April 11th, 2022. Yeah, it's a nice uh, 55 degrees. It's not too windy, not too cold. It's the weather that you want it to be. Oh, 100%. Before we get into so much stuff to talk about with Detroit City FC, I want to tell you that today's podcast is brought to you in part by Challenge Detroit. Challenge Detroit is a full-time job opportunity to get involved in the city, perfect for a recent college graduate, someone looking for a career change or challenge, and especially people passionate about Detroit and making a difference in their community. Applications close very soon, April 13th. Apply online at challengedetroit.com slash application. That's challengedetroit.com slash application. First off, Michigan stars. I mean, I don't want to spend a ton of time here. There have been more than 400 hot takes with that uh, tweet that went around the soccer world. We're not going to dwell there a ton. I think on field, it was great to see the Detroit City FC that like we know and love really click together. There was something about the energy. There was something about, even though it wasn't the biggest crowd at Keyworth there in a while, it was a raucous crowd and it felt good. Before the game, the stars were being the stars. Uh, I watched one of their camera guys object to putting on one of the media bibs because he's a quote unquote takes pictures for the team. So he shouldn't have to when literally every other photographer was like dressed properly. He just wanted to be like, I don't I don't want to do this. And just even then I shook my head, said they're doing it again. So to see the game go the way that I expected to go, uh, it felt like old times. The only thing that would have been better for me is if Devin Mumenza scored like a 30 yard screamer just and didn't celebrate, obviously, but just scored a long, long goal on his former team. But yeah, they they that's a DCFC we all know and love. They put they applied pressure. They played their uh, Python game, as I like to call it, where they just keep putting you into a corner and do a corner. And then eventually you look up and you're down three goals, three well taken goals as well. Yeah, this is a Detroit that people expected to see in the USL championship, which I don't really know why they did. We're glad to finally start seeing it. And it transitioned from this game into their next game uh, against Atlanta United 2. It seems like the momentum carried right through. I think Trevor might have sensed his team a little, being a little bit frustrated uh, with, the, or, with earlier league games where they were just kind of playing a bit, trying to find out about the team. And eventually, like, you know, if you're a boxer, you know, Floyd Mayweather, people don't really like him for the way he boxes, where he'll just kind of try to score points. And I felt like Detroit's trying to score points. Every so often, Floyd will get a match where he's like, you know what? I'm just going to go beat this guy up. And this was this, ma- this was this game where Detroit just showed up and said, you know what? We're just going to beat Atlanta up. It doesn't matter what, doesn't matter what they're going to do. If they can make a turnover, we're just going to counter and counter and counter. And they scored four brilliant goals, four different people, uh, all counterattacks. And I think that's great, honestly. It shows that they do have the lethal uh, the lethal look that we were hoping that they would be able to show during the league. What I'm encouraged about, too, is the rise of Michael Bryant with such a limited roster Every player really matters. And to see that he was able to add to the score tally and play an important role, I mean, that's a good sign going forward. Yeah, he was kind of my player of the game for the U.S. Open Cup match. I know a lot of people looked at me like, why? And it's because he's a center back slash a center mid. He typically plays in the middle of the field. The middle of the field is where he operates. For the Stars game, they put him at wing back and made him play most of the, if not all, the game. And like, I know some people are like, so he's a professional player. If you're used to prepping to play one way, if you go to work and you take uh, one street, you turn right, you turn left, you turn right, and you're there, and the next day you go to work, it's like, actually, go the other way, it's going to mess you up a bit. So if you're used to prepping to playing in the middle, having the ball come to your right foot, turning to your left, turning to your left, turning to your right, etc., now you're on the wing where like you literally are losing part of the field because you're against the sideline, your role is different, you have to run up and down the field most of the game, you're not worried about focused on defending, you're more of an offensive-minded type of player, it's going to mess you up a little bit. And the fact that he did it with a plum, was able to keep his person he was marking off the score sheet, uh, was great. Then to see him with uh, Atlanta United come across the field, get a nice ball, and then hammer it into the bottom corner. I was happy for him, honestly. You could tell by his celebration there was a lot of relief on his face because his first two moments he for playing for Detroit 
were very sketchy, and uh, a lot of people were worried uh, about him being on the field. Do you think that kind of curse of the first half of Detroit, because it, it, it's a kind of like Dr. Jekyll, Dr. Hyde set up with Le Rouge over the last few games where that first half is anemic, the second half is strong. It seems like that has not been the case the last two games. It seems like almost a intentional decision to push hard. I kind of think it was more of the home and away type of thing. I think with the stars, it just didn't matter because the stars were not good. Obviously, you see someone that's not good. You think of him as like barbecue chicken. You just attack, 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 attack. But with Atlanta United, I think it was more of we're in their stadium. We want to show that we're not afraid. We want to show that we're welcome to be here. And they did that. They came out and attacked. Honestly, they frustrated Atlanta United, which is made up of some players who are of their own origin, but some are from the number from the. Atlanta United actual MLS team who come down and train. Some of them are a little bit younger, but they got under the skin of some of the players. Uh, they got a red card on one of their talented players, Mejia, who after a penalty shot, which I thought might have been a penalty, came over to the ref, said a few magic words, and they sent him off. They got their another one of their players rattled who came and clattered into Brad Dunwell, which I'm glad Brad is okay because it was a very serious tackle that honestly I – you don't want to see plays like that. They even had their coach come over and apologize for it because he was so just, that's not supposed to happen ever. So yeah, they 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 came out and said, we're going to be the aggressors this time. We're not going to sit here and take the pressure and then try to like flip it like a, like a judo flip or something. We're going to come out here. We're just going to keep throwing punches. And eventually you're going to throw punches back or you're just going to keep getting punched in the face. And for Atlanta, they just kept getting punched in the face. Birmingham Legion is this Friday. Of course, we will see each other at Keyworth. What do you think of this match? I will say that although the record hasn't been been great, there was a, a beautiful header in the match last time for Legion. If people want to look at it, they don't have the same energy that some other clubs do. Yeah, I mean, that beautiful goal was nice, but it came in the 90th, 3rd minute against uh, Hartford Athletic, who are not very good at all. So I, I take it with a grain of salt. Birmingham just signed Juan Aguadella, who, former U.S. international player, played at the highest of highs in, the, in this country and in other countries as well. But I, I'm not really that worried because he only scored a penalty against Hartford, and that was really it. And uh, penalties, while they do count as goals, obviously, there's really not much effort involved. There's no, like, gorgeous play. There's no whatever. It's a foul happens in the box, whether someone's pushed over, whether it's a handball, whether someone says something crass to the referee in the box, whatever. It's really just, you should score this. You should not miss this. It's slated so that the kicker will score as opposed to miss. So to see a player of his caliber not really impact the game against a team that's much worse than Detroit, I'm not as worried. And honestly, uh, not to say that they shouldn't really focus on him at all. I think part of the problem is that people don't realize when they bring these talented stars down to the second and third and fourth divisions of their leagues is they're used to playing at the higher division where they get the calls. Uh, there's more style. There's more flair. People are looking at uh, the game to be more open. Where the lower level, it's a bit more open, but it's more we get the ball, get it up the field. Uh, and try to score it. Whereas up, I guess if I'm using food analogies, first divisions typically are filet mignon, second division, third division, fourth division are meat and potatoes, where it's like we just get the ball and mash it up the field and hope that you get towards the net. We're not trying to do four or five step overs. There's no uh, talented, no look Rabona crosses across the field. It's we get the ball, play the right way, get it into the net, r rinse, wash, and repeat. So I think he's going to struggle, Juan's going to struggle for a few games uh, just to get his feet underneath him. Uh, I think playing against Detroit probably won't help him because they're going to mark up on him very well and make sure that he's not the one to beat them. And looking at the rest of the Legion's roster, they still have a lot of expected points left. People still expect them to make the playoffs. But I I'm not that worried if I were a Detroit City FC fan. I, I think they'll be fine for this match. We're going to talk about the playoffs in a second. What is going to be the key to the game for LaRouche? Maintaining that aggressiveness, honestly. it's If they keep pressing people, say for like maybe the two or three top teams in the league, if they press people with the same intensity, which will be a bit harder because, again, they have 17 people rostered, most people will not be able to handle that press. If Reese Williams keeps delivering these crosses, if Pato continues his goal-scoring form of realizing that he is actually the forward, if Maxi continues to keep the middle of the field clean and getting the ball out, and the defense continues to keep Nate Steinwash from having to do too much work, yeah, I, I see this game being not maybe not maybe not four nothing, but at least two nothing, three to one type of game. Okay, now let's talk about the playoffs because this is a real possibility now for the Nice All Stars, and I say that tongue in cheek because there are so many people when. LaRue's first got in, you know, you got the smack talk. They're like, oh, what are they going to do? Well, guess what? 
538 now has them at a 51 chance, 51 percent chance of making the playoffs. And USL Tactics now lists them in the mix at number 10 in their rundown, which both indications is like, okay, like DCFC is finding its footing. And this is really getting to be an exciting time as we see how the club actually measures up. Even even with, frankly, part of a hand tied behind his back. I mean, 51% is still a failing grade. It's better than where they were before, but 51%. I'll be a bit more excited when it's like 65, 70, where I'm like, okay, like they, they're on the precipice of just making a few more moves and they're here. But they've made tremendous strides. They're showing the league that they are not afraid to get down and mix it up. And the fact that they've gone now uh, four or five games, five games, only three goals given up. Like that's that's a pretty amazing tactic. No matter who you're playing against, you can be playing against like five year olds. If you give up that few goals in that many games, uh, it shows your defense is really here to stay. I saw a stat on Twitter from uh, John Heveron, who I believe is with the team, uh, that they have not surrendered a shot on goal in the last 242 minutes of play, going back to the 28th minute against Memphis, which pretty good. Yeah, I mean, I take that a little bit with a grain of salt just because it includes the Stars game, and the Stars just weren't going to get a shot in goal because they're just <laughs> not a they're just not a good team. And I don't know many times they can say that like publicly, privately, uh, in airplane mode, uh, yelling out the window of a car. They're just, not, they're, they're just not a good team. So like, I expect them to like not get shots against quality teams. But yeah, the other other teams that they played against. That's a great stat to have. If you're going to be a defensive team, your defense needs to be good. Like you can't be a defensive team. Your defense is like, all right, it has to be the best part of your team. And Stephen Carroll, Matty Lewis, and Devin Amumensa have been like the building blocks. And Reese Williams and Declan Wynn have been great on the wings in terms of getting back defensively, getting the ball up for crosses. And of course, when Nate's been called upon, he's only given up three goals. He's done his job pretty well. To me, these next few games are really important because they sh- are all games that we should be competitive or winning, and we should be we should go and like get those baskets of points before we go into things like the rowdies or something like that. They're going to be real toe to toe matches. Yeah, all the points that you need to get, you need to scoop up because when you play against the rowdies, uh, Louisville City teams like that, we won't we will not play Phoenix, but like teams like Phoenix. You want to make sure you have all the points you need because if you can then go and say we can lose, we can afford to lose this game because we have all these other we picked up out of a possible twelve points we picked up nine or eight of them and in this game we're expected to probably lose. We get a point here. Hey, found money. It's like when you take out your pants off the dryer and it's like, oh, there's five dollar bill in here. Cool. I didn't have five dollars before. I do now. I hope that they do because later on the schedule they've got a lot of difficult opponents even in the other conference. So like somehow this year and I'm hoping to be out there actually, but. Somehow this year they drew the switchbacks and the switchbacks are setting the Western Conference on fire. Yeah, I'm a little confused by that because they've been notoriously mediocre. But right now they're playing really, really well. Yeah, it's it's going to be a hard game. Games like those, you want to make sure you have enough points. So when you get out there, if you happen to lose, it's like, well, we lost this game, but we're still fine because we beat all the bad teams. Like the best thing you can do to make sure you make the playoffs as like a mid table team is beat all the bad teams and compete against all the good teams. If you beat all the bad teams and there are a lot more bad teams in the USL league championship than like people seem to know, you'll be fine. If you beat all the bad teams, get points, not just tie, but like get points against all the bad teams, maybe tie or lose to all the good teams. You should make the playoffs. That draw against the Riverhounds may end up being pretty big later on. Oh, definitely, because Pittsburgh is going to roar back. Like they are, they're a quality team. They're going to roar back. It could factor into playoff seeding potentially if they happen to be right around each other. All right, I want to get into this because it is a big deal. We, of course, will dip into the well a couple of times as the story kind of develops. But MLS squad, the Columbus Crew, is coming for the U.S. Open Cup. The next round is going to be here at Keyworth, Tuesday, April nineteenth, seven thirty p.m. This is a great opportunity for LaRouge. It's national stage to me playing a, 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 frankly, you know, a top tier team because they're in the MLS. Whatever you think of the MLS, the Columbus crew, they have a lot of history of their own. They've been around since 96. Like, let's set aside MLS for a second. Uh, The crew and I've been to their stadium. I have seen the flags on porches. They average 18,000 in attendance a game. They have real fans. Like, they have a community there. And I think this is going to be an electric match just just from like the rivalry and like the energy standpoint. You've got Michigan versus Ohio. But one of the things that I got a lot of requests for is let's have an honest conversation about the match, about Detroit City FC's chances and like take off any 
Homer hats we have, and let, let, let's look at what's going to be on the field. Okay, so the crew have a game the 16th against Orlando City, who is currently second in the Eastern Conference. So I'm sure after that, they'll play at home, rest up a little bit, then they're going to come the 19th to play against Detroit City at Keyworth, which honestly, for every lower league team, your goal is to play an MLS team, hopefully at home, so that you can get the gate revenue, get everyone who's coming there, get everyone here to get money for your team and then potentially win. I know the Michigan Bucks, who people don't really know about, they're not the Flint City Bucks. They were historically, are historically, one of the best lower level teams in the history of the Lamar Hunt U.S. Open Cup. They've beaten, I think, five MLS teams. I think most recently they beat the Chicago Fire at home. I, that game, I was at that game, it was electric. They took them to overtime, beat them three to two. The, the Fire brought on their stars to be like, all right, we're not going to lose this game to this team. We're not going to let that happen. And then Nurman Krinkic, who's currently playing in Croatia, I think. Yeah, he's playing over in Slavic Europe. He came on with a nice uh, side volley in like the 115th minute to put bucks ahead to put them in to win. So it was a very like crazy, chaotic environment. That only had like 2,000 people indoors. So I can imagine that Keyword's going to be rocking for sure. They're probably going to be close to their attendance record just because, as you said, the crew have fans. I'm sure some of their fans will travel. I know some people personally coming from Ohio to come to this game. The crew also have fans in Michigan, so they'll be here as well. Plus, you have the people who want to see Detroit play against good quality slash want to see them lose who are going to show up. So it should be a very festive environment. But on the field, in all honesty, 17 players and maybe 14 of them regularly play. And one of them is a backup keeper. So he's never been on the field at all for Detroit City. So it's very much a hold on and hope we can be okay. You really want to hope Billy Forbes can be back soon from injury, which I don't think is the case, seeing as he was in a boot the last time I saw him. Uh, Francis Tuahene is working off an injury, so we're going to count him in because he did play, but like he's not going to be the guy that we no typically know and love. I'm sure the crew are going to come out with a roster, or a lineup that's some of their star players, maybe one or two, some backup players who play a lot, but maybe don't start. They'll get their own starts. Some older players who might mean something to the club who are just getting to run out. Some academy players who just want to, you know, need to get their first looks into it. They might put some of their star players on the bench in case the game is close late. Like if the crew have a one nothing lead, maybe see one or two star players people know just for the crowd to be like, oh, look, it's that guy. I know that guy. If the crew are down Detroit, they will put their star players in to be like, all right, we're not going to lose this game. My honest opinion right now, I don't see Detroit winning this game. If they do, it'll be one of their biggest wins in their club's history, not just because they're beating MLS side, but because they're beating MLS side shorthanded who are coming with a full complement of players. I think key to this is going to be Nate Steinwasher because although they have not had as many scores in recent games, there's still a lot of there, there's still a lot of good firepower with the crew. You've got Lucas Zellerayan, he's an Argentinian, four goals already this season. Derek Etienne, he's Haitian, two goals, two assists. Like if you watch the crew and I'll admit, I do. I, I can just say this, and I don't know how many DCFC fans have watched an MLS match in person because of everything with the culture. It is a different level, like 100%. And if they come out there with their starters, we are in trouble. And it's going to be on Nate Steinwasher and the defense to kind of lock them up because it is a different layer of play. It's faster. Like the, the mistakes that you saw earlier in the season with the ball going over and not connecting, you know, with those long passes, the crew are great at turning around defense to offense and they will make you pay almost every time. To me, it's going to go one of two ways. It's either going to be very close and DCFC has a chance to pull it out somehow, Nate Steinwasher, and I believe in Nate, I do, or it's not going to be pretty. I mean, they're not playing their starters because they're, they're playing a game against the number two team in their conference three days before, four days. They're not going to play all their starters, so they just won't because all the starters are going to be playing against that game. It's kind of the thing where we have to look at it with this lens. It's, it's kind of warped when you go from first division to second division, second division to first division. To the second lower division teams, the U.S. Open Cup matches mean a bit more because you're playing against better competition. It's more of a way to like, you know, show that we belong sort of thing. But for like the higher level teams, say in England, Brazil, Spain, Germany, who are playing these cup matches against the lower level teams, it's like, well, this is just another game we have to play. It's, it's like the scene that I remember from Street Fighter where M. Bison was like, 
the day I came to your village was the most important day of your people's life. And to me, it was another Tuesday. <laughs> so it's kind of how they view it, where it's like, we are going to a different stadium we're not used to being in. It's a, it's an in a town where you typically don't go in. Probably smaller than where we're normally accustomed to. But like, it's just another game for us to play. Yes, it might be mean something a lot to these people. So let's go out there and do the best we can. But like, you're not going to see, they're not going to come out with Darlington Nagby, Gassi Zardis, uh, Luis Diaz. They're not going to come out like, y'all, you, they're not going to put these players out to start the game. If they do, then yes, we are going to have a problem. But I don't see that because these players are going to be playing in the game literally three or four days before and might need some rest. They'll, they'll be on the bench for sure. Like they'll feature on the bench. They might even show up just to wave and say hi to the crowd. But like, I don't think Columbus is going to take this game as seriously as say Detroit might. And that's not to say that they're not going to try to win the game. I'm not going to say they're coming out here just to get beat up and be like, we're here just for fun. Now, if they didn't have a game for a week and this was their only game for the week, yes, then they would put everyone out full, full barrels and they would blow them out of the water. I hate to say it gives you a bit of a better chance to win the game because uh, you can get the jump on a team. Not being as technically versed as you are, what is it is going to be important for Detroit City to, make, as you say, get the jump, some sort of advantage? So it's kind of like when they played against FC Cincinnati uh, a few years back in the U.S. Open Cup, and they got out there with a gorgeous, gorgeous goal. I remember that goal. I was there, and literally the FC Cincinnati media people were like, go, uh, Oh, like the whole thing just went out of one small groan of like a kid who knocked the glass off the counter. It was like, oh, and everyone, they looked at me and I'm like, I, I didn't score the goal, but like it was a really <laughs> well taken goal. And then the rest of the game they spent playing defensively, which Cincinnati got another goal to take it to overtime. And then eventually in extra time, they won four to one. What you have to do is you have to take counterattack, take your chances, but like defensively you were playing defensively for most of this game so the way detroit played like the first couple of halves against other teams i know people hate you have to play defensively in terms of talent they have the more talented roster like i know detroit homers don't want to hear that but just off talent right now they have columbus has a more talented roster if they chose to put out all their players out there against our best players they're probably going to beat us three to four nothing so come out defensively compact shape uh, everyone is going to track back. Maybe they're not parking the bus, which is a term that means putting all 11 people in front of your own net. Maybe they're not doing that, but you're playing more compact defensively. There's more of an effort to, if you get the ball, uh, maybe a small few quick passes and we're just hoofing it up the field. Like maybe not to start the game early on, but maybe like in the 30th, 40th, 50th minute when it's like, all right, still zero, zero. We're going to make sure we keep this 0-0, zero, zero. especially if you get a goal. Once you get a goal, at that point, you're protecting your lead. You're not trying to get a second goal. You're just trying to get out there and say, we have a goal. We have one. You have none. Let's keep it that way. So if it means we got to kick the ball up, it means maybe a few more cynical fouls, maybe not yellow card-worthy fouls, but a few more like we're going to stop the play, maybe even some more time-wasting. You might see people try to throw the ball in and be like, the ball is wet or something. Something's wrong or I can't do whatever. You're going to see a little bit more time-wasting. You might see Nate run up for a goal kick, stop and be like, wait, there's a blade of grass on the ball. Let me just get that off real quick and do it again. Oh, wait, the blade of grass is still here. So, you know, it'd be perfect for this. And I hate it's going to draw some chuckles to attend him approve would be perfect oh, for this. He'd be someone who's like, hey, I need to waste some time. Give me a second. I love him. But like, he's one of the biggest time wasting. He, he is a player that is playing far below his station to the crew. I, I don't see Detroit winning this game. I don't see it as a blowout. I don't see Detroit winning this game, and it's not because I don't think Detroit can win the game. Uh, I just think the crew are not going to play their, all their starters, uh, given the fact they have a, a little bit game that maybe means a bit more to them uh, three to four days ahead. But I could be wrong. They could rest players for that game and then bring everyone up for the, for the Detroit game. So Well, and Columbus has struggled in the Open Cup in different ways, so they, they might have that, that, that point to prove. Now, to me, it's even more important that fans show up on Tuesday, like the crowd is going to be that 12th player. It's great to see the storyline of MLS coming to Detroit, but on our terms. Well, it's different uh, than the Stars. I know people were expecting people to come to the Stars match and you didn't really get many people. Heck, I don't know if they even released it. In, they did a, not. An attendance number. But it's different because one, no one cares about the Stars. Two, more people care about the crew. And three, it's an MLS team that's coming to your stadium that won't happen for some time at least for a while. And every game that Detroit has had a team that typically does not come to their stadium, whether it's international friendly, whether it's their summer series where they brought teams from the team from Germany, St. Pauli, uh, or they brought Frosinone in, or they brought the team from Mexico in. 
they had large numbers for those games because the fans were like, oh, this is my team from Mexico who doesn't ever come up here often. I got to be at that game. Or I'm a fan of, of Liga MX, MX soccer. I got to be at this game. Or I like German soccer. I got to be at the St. Pauli game. So I expect them to have at least five or 6,000 people there just on principle of it being an MLS team who doesn't come here often. Not even accounting for the fact that it's a team that has fans in our region. To be honest, I'm really excited about what's going to happen Friday and Tuesday, and I cannot wait for the energy and fun in Hamtramck. Hopefully they can get the win against Birmingham and put a strong showing against against Columbus and show that the rest to the rest of the soccer world that they are indeed a much revamped and a team that's here to stay. We are done for today. Thank you so much, Fletcher Sharp. I appreciate you. Of course. Thanks for having me on. We're doing Detroit City FC coverage every Monday and the rest of the week, talking about what to know and where to go around Metro Detroit. If you've got feedback, thoughts, topics we should talk about, dailydetroit at gmail.com. We are here for your questions. With that, I'm Jer Stays. Remember that you are somebody, and we'll see you around Detroit.